The deal is finally official. Joey Gallo is headed to the Yankees. I wanted to wait to get all the details right for this video. I know some other people already jumped on it when the trade was supposed to be six prospects headed back to the Rangers, but now it's only four. So I wanted to get it right. It's kind of frustrating all these reporters and people tiptoeing around the fact that it was official and not official and it got moved back to Thursday. But anyways, regardless of when it was made official, the trade is now done. Joey Gallo is now a Yankee. What's up guys, it's Tom here. Welcome back to the channel. Quite a big trade. Joey Gallo has finally been moved and he is headed to the Yankees. My initial reaction to this trade is that I think it's a pretty fair one. The Yankees get the guy that they're looking for without sacrificing major prospects in this deal. And the Rangers get back a nice haul of prospects prospects that will definitely strengthen their farm system. I wish the Rangers could have got back six guys like they originally were. That would have been even better. However, I think it was the right time to deal Gallo. He's playing really good right now. Played really hot before the all-star break and he's going to probably walk after next season anyway so might as well deal him when he's pretty hot. With that being said, I'll give you guys the whole deal. The Yankees get Joey Gallo and left-handed pitcher Jolie Rodriguez and some cash, while the Rangers get prospects Glenn Otto, Ezekiel Duran, Josh Smith, and Trevor Hauber. Before I break all these players down, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more MLB trade deadline content and MLB content in general. We are coming up on the deadline. It is tomorrow. Big names are about to be moved as well. I think Max Scherzer is almost close to being a Padre, very, very close. And that's one of the things I predicted. So if that comes true, that'd be huge for the brand and the Padres, I guess. Anyways, let's get into it. So Joey Gallo, obviously he is a big three true outcome guy. He's gonna walk, strike out, or hit a home run. This year he's hitting 223 with 25 home runs and 869 OPS. A 19.1 walk percentage and a 32.2 strikeout percentage. An interesting thing is that he doesn't chase a lot of pitches outside the zone. He just swings and misses a lot. <laughs> Um, but he has the highest walk percentage in the league and the most walks in the league at 74. His bat can get super hot shown in a five game stretch back at the end of June where he had seven home runs in five games. Not only are you going to get a power bat, in the Bronx, you're also going to get elite defense in right field. He has an outs above average of six and a 14 defensive runs saved. Both of those are very elite. We all know about what Joey Gallo is. Now we'll move on to the pitcher, Jolie Rodriguez. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I could be butchering it, I'm sorry but he is a left-handed fastball changeup relief pitcher. Quite an interesting combination of pitches right there. I think it said fastball sinker and changeup, and he rarely throws his slider, I think 3% of the time, but he does have one. When you look at the stat line, it is interesting because in 27 and a third innings pitch, he has a 5.93 ERA, and you see that and you're like, oh, Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. I don't want that on my team, but you look at his expected ERA, which is a 3.76, and he also has a 3.7 FIP. So he is probably more in that four to just below four ERA range, and he has a 23.4 K percentage. As a relief pitcher, that isn't horrible, but I think it could be better for a guy like him. He excels versus lefties, has a 176 batting average against. So I guess it'll be a all right addition to the bullpen for the Yankees. And I guess they're also getting some cash. I didn't see how much they're exactly getting, but I'm sure the Rangers covered some of Joey Gallo's contract. Moving over to the prospects that the Rangers got back, we'll start with right-handed pitcher Glenn Otto. He is the number 28th ranked prospect within the Yankees organization. He was a 2017 fifth rounder. He is 25 years old. His best pitch is a sharp 12-6 curveball and followed by his fastball in the low 90s. Can it get up to the mid 90s and occasionally touch up to 98 in 75 and two thirds innings between double A and triple A, mostly in double A. He has had a 3.33 ERA, 115 strikeouts, 17 walks. So that's a great stat line to see in one of your prospects coming up through the system. Moving over, we have second baseman slash infielder Ezekiel Duran, who is the number 15 prospect within the Yankees organization, according to MLB Pipeline. 
He was an international signing in 2017. 22 years old, produces some of the best exit velos in the system, power to all fields, but needs to improve his approach. He has solid speed and has 2020 potential, meaning he has the potential to hit 20 home runs and has 20 stolen bases in a season. So you gotta be hyped about that if you're the Rangers and he pans out that way. I believe Oh, I didn't write down what level he played at, but I believe it was in some sort of A ball and he had a 290 average, 12 home runs, and a 907 OPS. Moving over to shortstop Josh Smith, the number 14th ranked player within the Yankees organization, according to MLB Pipeline, a 2019 second rounder. He's 23 years old and his claim to fame is his bat to ball skills. According to the MLB Pipeline, it is one of the best in the organization. He raked in a short season A ball and other teams were interested in him at that time. And I bet the Rangers were one of those teams. Now they have him. He is a better fit at second, but can play short and his stats A and high A ball stats he has a 324 average, nine home runs, and a 1089 OPS. So his bat is definitely the plus tool here. And one day, I think he'll be a everyday MLB bat. The last piece that the Rangers are getting back is second baseman Trevor Hover, number 23rd prospect within the Yankees org. 2020 third rounder is 22 years old. He works counts, draws walks, swing has raw power and high exit velos. The only problem is uncertain of where he's going to be placed in the field. But I mean, in the AL with the Rangers, if you're going to hit, you're going to be in the lineup. In A ball, he had a 288 average, nine home runs, 943 OPS, and a 21.4 walk percentage. So they are right about him walking a lot. That is very true. Good disciplined approach at the plate. So those are the pieces that the Rangers got back. That was the whole deal, the Joey Gallo deal. After looking at all the prospects, I wasn't familiar with them before the trade went down, but after doing a little quick research, it seems like the Rangers got back some pretty good talent for what they gave up. I mean, when you look at the ranks of these guys within the Yankees organization, you're like, wow, the Yankees just fleece the Rangers, but digging a little deeper, I think these are some pretty quality guys, guys that are putting up good numbers in A ball and double A, but they're going to have to produce at higher levels within the minors to have an impact at the MLB level. And they also got to do good at the MLB level for this trade to pan out. I think these four guys are solid, Duran, Smith, and Hover. I think our quality bats and then Glenn Otto could eventually be a MLB guy, but we'll see how it plays out. The Rangers are in no hurry to contend for a championship. Rest in peace to all my Rangers fans. I think the rebuild is starting right now if it hasn't already started coming into the season. Let me know about your thoughts of this trade down in the comments below. I want to hear all your guys' opinions, Yankees fans, Rangers fans. Let me know what you think about the deal. Once again, make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel for more MLB content, trade deadline content, and we are close to the deadline and I can't wait to see more of the big names get traded. With that being said, thank you guys for watching the video. I hope you have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.